research because it's just she said it's just too disturbing. Anyway, um, all right. This 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 is very important. Meaning, Derek, you should listen to this. Okay. Um, this this part has a cylindrical shape. Most parts that have a cylindrical shape will be created using a revolve feature. Okay. When we have a revolve feature, we we normally show the axis of revolution with a center line, but that's not always, not always true. What is always true is that we want to show a diameter. Okay? And, and so let's keep that in mind. What is the diameter? The outermost diameter is 134. Okay? So I'm going to ask the question, where is my 134? It's not here. So we have to get rid of this dimension scheme and put in what we're supposed to have. And, and by the way, I mean, it's, it's okay, but it really needs to be the way it should be. Okay, so I'm gonna choose from here to there, 134. So the number was right, it just, it wasn't the same type of dimension from the source document. Was there another dimension that is on the source document that's not in here? Um, yes, there's a diameter of 64. So again, these two should not be in there. We're gonna take, rid, take those out we're going to throw in a diameter of 64. So our job is not to recreate the wheel. Our job is not to you know, change the dimensioning scheme from the source document. Now, these other two dimensions are great. I believe they are from the source document. And notice how Derek put the origin exactly where it should have been. I mean, it would not have been bad at all if you put the origin on the back here or the front, but I would prefer it there. So that's excellent. Okay, and all the other constraints are there. So all we have to do is make sure we match the same dimensioning scheme as the what? Source drawing. Okay. So that, that part's good. What are we going to do next? We're going to create a cut. And let's look at the sketch for this cut. Okay, um, and let's answer the question, why would this not be a hole? Why would it be a cut instead of a hole? The diameter of this is 28 millimeters. What's the diameter of an inch? It's 28.35. Basically, you know, this is this 0.35 millimeters difference from a hole. It's, it's essentially like a one inch hole. So, if you have a hole that's bigger than say 0.75, and I don't know how many, I don't know how many millimeters that would be. I can figure it out though. Um, I could tell the software if I change this, and I'll put it back. If I change this to 0 0.75 inches, okay, so it's 19 1905 approximately is three quarters of an inch. If you have a hole that's bigger than that, it's bigger than 19 millimeters. It's okay to create it with a cut, okay? It's okay to create it with a cut. Uh, it was still, and it really, honestly, it would depend on the, the, the office that you're working in. Some design managers would require that, you know, holes much bigger than even a three inch diameter. Instead of, you know, calling that a circular cut, they might call it a hole. They might require that you use the whole wizard and use a legacy hole um, with a three inch diameter to make that. They might. We are going to consider the machinist who have a tool already predefined, a predefined size, whatever that is, that's gonna be a hole. If it's something they have to gouge out, we're gonna call that a cut. Gouging out means, for us right now, anything that's bigger than this, anything bigger than 3 fourths or 19 millimeters. So, I'm gonna put this back the way it was. It's perfectly fine, and I want everybody to understand it's perfectly fine to do this. This is not points off. But again, it might depend, might be a little bit different depending on where you go. Um, we would still use a whole call-out tool to create the call-out for this in the drawing environment, even though it's not a whole. And then we created a sketch. Where is that sketch? Look at it and see. Okay. Okay. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this dimensioning scheme. So Derek created a sketch so that he would have a predefined location for placing these holes. And that's an excellent way of doing it. You know, you know what you should do. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be out next time, you could just take over and teach the class. When I get your paycheck. 
You know, I don't know, and I'll tell you why. When you saw it, you'd feel so sorry for me, you'd start crying. I don't make much, but I have fun. Isn't that that's more important? That's all that counts. That's all that counts. Um, and I have a motorcycle, but my wife is making me sell my motorcycle. Isn't that mean? What? I, well, I have some health problems and I crash a lot. I've been crashing a lot lately. That's, that's kind of bad. I know, it's, it's, but I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm worth a hell of a lot of money, but I'm dead. And I, told, I reminded her of that. She's like, well, yeah, okay, keep it. All right, so, um, Derek, I really like this. You've got the positions laid out for the, these different holes. And um, now there's going to be no guesswork when you put them in. Um, now, you put in the 14 millimeter, you put the counterbore in. This one, I think we might need to change it, okay? Um, you've got a counterbore for, and, and it's listing uh, an M5, okay? But you're, you're changing the numbers to be gigantic, okay? These don't match an M5. An M5 is really small compared to this, I think. So what we're going to do instead is turn off. Uh, actually, what we're going to do instead is do a, a legacy hole. I mean, you, you, you're doing it just right, but we just need to shift this information just a little bit. We're going to shift all this to the legacy hole callout. I'm, I'm sorry, the legacy hole dialog box. All right? Because theoretically, and, and I'm sorry, in reality, this is, these are not M5s, although this information is correct. You're, you're thinking right, but we just got to tweak it a little bit. Watch this. Okay? So I'm going to use the same numbers, 12, 18, and 12. I'm going to choose legacy hole instead. I'm going to enter counter, what, what am I going to enter? Um, this is going to be counter board. And it, uh, what do we know about this counter board? I just said it, but I just forgot it. So it's going to be, the, in, the hole portion will be 12. The counter board is 18 and 12. So 12, 18, and 12. All right, I got it. So the diameter is going to be 12, which is actually Zwolf in German. Um, the depth, all right, okay. Uh, the depth is not, it's going to be through all. This will be, what did I say that was, 12, 24? Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be 24, and the counterboard depth will be 12. Okay, so that's the only thing we need to change, and we're good to go. I think that's right. And look at it and see, that, is that right? No, <laughs> it's 12, 18, and 12. So who said it's 24? I did. I was wrong. Okay, let me fix it. It's easy to fix, though, because I said so. So it's going to be 18, uh, 18, 18. Much, much better. Gosh, I love this. It, it makes it, fixing errors so much easier. Okay. So I think the only thing left here was a chamfer. Now, there is one feature missing. Do you know what it is? Yeah, it's a cut. We've got to take off the bottom portion of this entire model, okay? So I'm going to draw one line, one line. I'm going to cut off, remove everything below it. And wherever that line is located, I'm just going to extrude cut, okay? so. I'm going to choose, let me look at it orthographically, so I'm, I'm sorry, isometric. The front plane would be a great location for this. I'm going to sketch on the front plane, it's stable. I'm going to draw a line that goes straight across. Whoa, I, I hate it a little. I'm going to draw a line that goes straight across from here to there. And, and you know, I might even do it on purpose to make sure it's not horizontal, just to remind myself, make it horizontal. The only dimension that we need is from the center to that line and I believe that distance is 45. I remembered when I, first, when I was 45, I felt old, but now it's like, gosh, I wish I was that young again. I'm so old, somebody said to me the other day, they were like, hey man, give me that hamburger. I'm like, no, I'm gonna eat it, I just bought it. He grabbed it and ran away, he's in little five points. I said, hey man, give me my burger back. And he started eating, he said, shut up, my old man, you're gonna die soon anyway. No, I pulled out my can of mace and shot him with it. Just tapped, came up slowly behind him and tapped him. <laughs> Fortunately, with cat-like reflexes that I had developed when I was a Navy walrus, which are much tougher than seals, I was able to grab the hamburger before it hit the sidewalk. Even took a bite on my way down. All right. Um, so you see this, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna tell the Groovy software, take this Groovy sketch and do what? Extrude, cut, through wall, um, and I'm gonna flip the side to cut so I don't wanna end up with a little piece at the bottom. Okay, how about
about that? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me save this. And you're supposed to save work every two minutes. This one I'm going to go ahead and bring into the drawing environment and show you the basic setup because you don't, I don't think you've done any, any section views yet, have you? I don't think so. So you need to know this. So, And Lord knows we have enough time. All right. I'm going to choose make drawing from part. It's going to be in millimeters. I'm going to choose form A3. I'm going to start out with the front view and the front view only. Just stick it there and stop. I'm going to get rid of these little center marks, all three of them. I'm going to change the view size so it looks big. Er. <laughs> uh, I'm going to choose properties. I'm going to choose one to one and see if it's too big. That's no, about right. Is that thunder? Yeah. Or is it just fireworks? Oh, somebody rolled over the big owl bus again. It's pranksters. That's what, you, that's what happens, you let fraternities come on campus. All right, so what am I gonna do? Watch this groovy people, you two call them. I'm gonna use this tool, it's under view layout, and it's called section view. Okay, section view. I'm gonna choose these, these two choices to define the section view, okay. Section view, number choice number one is section. Choice number two is vertical. I'm going to place it here at this snap to the center. Don't, don't get near the center. Get on the center, snap, accept it, pull it over here. <coughs> How about that? Can you imagine doing this stuff by hand 35 years ago? So. It did. But that's, that's all we, really all we had, or most, most engineers is all we had. Um, you're going to need to finish this and make it look nice but I think by default it looks okay. Um, if you right click this hatch pattern and choose, uh, let's see, over here, over here, choose, turn off material cross hatch, you can go all the way down to the bottom and choose a pattern that is called parallel. And you'd want to probably change that to 45 degrees and then you can increase the, the hatch, you know, that's, that's just way too, way, 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 way too close. Uh, this is way too far apart. So, you know, kind of like it was before would probably be a good, good, you know, maybe one to 1.25 1 or something like that. It's about right. Okay. You'd also need to include your center lines and center marks. And um, I really, uh, is this assignment seven? Yes. Um, let me go back to this assignment seven. Okay, assignment, assignment seven. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you a drawing of each one of these four, each one of these four drawings you're going to create. I'm going to show you what it will look like before you add dimensions. And I want you to make your drawings look exactly like that before you add any dimensions. Now, you're going to need to do all the setup things we learned about in assignment four and five. And, and